I think we've been told since we were children that design is an important part of our culture. But being here in Denmark, growing up, maybe you don't realize this because it's part of your surroundings. But going abroad and see how private interests and private sectors, maybe you disregard what we consider good design. Then you suddenly realize how big a part of your culture it is and how much you should appreciate that almost all built environment in Denmark is very precise and functional and beautiful and made from good materials. Danish design is in many ways a reflection of Central European modernism, which was about rational production, it was about simplicity and making design products that would stand the test of time. On one hand, they would be so simple that they would be timeless. On the other hand, they should have so much character that they would stand out as individual pieces. That means that details and materials are extremely important. I think nature is something that transcends all cultural preferences because all over the world there's a natural connection between humans, the natural environment and natural materials because we're part of the same. If you design something that's meant to last for 10, 20, 30 years, it's also important that it becomes beautiful as time passes by. Working with artificial materials, it needs maintenance, it needs to be replaced. But working with natural materials like stainless steel, brass, wood, stone, time actually only adds to the design and it becomes more beautiful as you use it. The purity that you see in Danish design is very much about essence, focusing on the important elements of design. It's a process of paring down in many ways, but not completely to the most purest form, but to a point where simple enough to become timeless and not bound to a certain cultural context. I think there's a general connection between economy and the cultural expression of a society. If you go back in history, you can see that cultures of wealth have been very expressive in their design and architecture, whether it's ancient Greece or ancient Rome or Renaissance or Baroque or Rococo, whereas cultures of poverty on the other side have been very simple, timeless, and has been about meeting needs and has been made from natural materials. Whether that is design from traditional Japan, whether it's the arts and craft movement in Britain, or the Shakers in the US, or Scandinavian design, it's actually simple, beautiful design objects that could have been made a thousand years ago or today that has defined the visual culture of our design tradition. Denmark developed as a result of spending a lot of hours indoors because of the, the grey, rainy weather outside, and it's very much your home, the way you live, that is an extended expression of who you are. Working as architects, we have a very rational and analytical approach to design that stands apart from designers that comes from a, a background of crafts where they work more intuitively with their hands. And I think we have a, a certain attention to detail because we work as designers as well. So it's not only about creating spaces, but as much about creating all the details in architecture that is so important for the final result. A lot of very good architects that have also been good designers. There are not that many because traditionally it's been disciplines that have been very divided. Either you're an architect or you're a product designer. There were two different things. Looking back in history, a person like Arne Jacobsen did have a similar approach as us, uh, where it was about designing everything from cutlery to curtains to taps to the architecture and the building itself. And that has definitely been a, a great inspiration for us. I think the human element in design is extremely important. You can see and feel if a product has been touched by a hand, but I think it's important also to be innovative and use contemporary production. If you can combine the most innovative technology with the touch of hand, that's ideal for design. I hope that the future approach to designing all the spaces in a home will be a more human-centric approach to design and architecture where you care about all the senses and that all spaces should feel comfortable and nice to be in. Looking at the poetic qualities, the details, the materials, and how they make you feel as a human being.